I first heard of the Moog synthesizer in about 1972. I first heard of the Moog synth when I was probably about 10 years old on the album Moving Pictures by Rush. I first heard of the, the Moog probably when some of my friends were really into Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I had to wait until 19... Um, what do I say? My 1972... 73 even to get my own Moog synthesizers, uh, mini Moogs. I had a, what I call a Clavio synthesizer, which I played with my first album with the group Main Horse, and uh, I was a Moog freak. And so I, I said, Jesus, God, please let me have a Moog. And it came just like that, materialized. We started Refugee, and then, then I got two, and I started sleeping with them. <laughs> Moogs are very, very near and dear to my heart because I'm just a synth geek kid. I grew up right in the right time, late 70s, early 80s, when all of this was burgeoning. He was fantastic. He focused on the sound. And, um, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of musicians and they've made it very clear that the kind of cornerstone of the Moog legacy is it's absolutely the best sound in the industry. And I was way into the prog thing when I was in high school, so I brought all my Keith Emerson baggage along with me, with the band, and wanting to do some cool stuff synthwise. Guys like us, we can't help but be distracted and, and uh, want to delve into some of that stuff and find some sounds that no one's heard before. If it wasn't for Bob, there would be no synthesis. There would be no electronic music the way we know it today. He was the one who really popularized control voltage synthesizers, which was an analog method of controlling pitch and, f and frequencies of the filters. He was the main American inventor to popularize a synthesizer. Bob was amazingly creative in the instruments that he designed, and he also had the fortune of working with people like Herb Deutsch and Wendy Carlos and others who helped him find the path to create electronic instruments capable of making wonderful and scary sounds. Through his development, it ceased being electronics and it, and, and it, and it became sound and emotion, vibe, flow that we all get to enjoy. It was not about a collection of circuit boards. He took synthesis and put it in the hands of the musician. He gave us the keyboard, he gave us you know, the controller and a million, other, a million other innovations, which don't seem like a lot now, but up to that point, you were basically you know, using a dimmer switch and a light bulb to get sound out of the thing. You always had a, you know, a, a screwdriver and, and a pencil, and you know, it was always very, very subdued, very, and so modest, so humble, and such a genius. I really, really miss him. He was like a, yeah, I wish I had a dad like that, you know? Virtuality is dedicated to synth pioneer Bob Moog. Amin actually asked dad for some advice on the project, and dad was more than happy, of course, generously to, to give that advice and to agree to um, provide some narrative for it. As we were reaching the final stages of a Bolero Electronica, I wanted to have a narrator. I wanted to have someone talk us through all these different synthesizers that I was doing. And Mark Vale helped me connect to the great Bob Moog. There was God standing in front of me, a very amicable, very kind man. Mark was telling him what I was trying to do. Bob looked at me and went, that's cool, play me some of it. He listened to it and he came back the next day and he said, this is great, what can I do to help? And I said, what I think would be great is to have you as a narrator in this. And as each stanza comes on, you could talk a little bit about what each synthesizer could be. He said, I would love to do that. Let me know. Sadly, we lost Bob to cancer only months after that meeting. I couldn't put it on, I couldn't listen to it, I just stopped. I, I contemplated whether I was just gonna put it away and it was gonna be one of those unfinished album projects. It sat there for a year. It was Mark Vale who told me about Amin's CD, Virtuality, and particularly Bolero Electronica. We were having breakfast together, and he handed me the CD and the synthesizer timeline that went with it. And I, I was blown away because I've never seen anything quite like it. And I looked at it, and the first thing I thought of is, wow, that, that looks like the Moog legacy to me. They had found a box of projects that Bob was working on 
uh, ideas that he hadn't had a chance to finish, schematics and designs and all kinds of things. And in there was a letter or a printed email from me and from Mark about this guy and his Bolero album, Must Help Finish Narration. The date of the release is significant, along with the serial number for the album, which is 05231934, because May 23rd, 1934 is Dad's birthday. Amin has very intentionally decided to release it on that day in celebration of this, this wonderful concept album, but also in celebration of Dad's life and career.